back. Welcome back. Today, I am bringing y'all a very special video, showing y'all my background, one of my prized possessions, my video game shelf. I'm going to tell y'all a little bit about it, how it came about, and what's all in it. Alright, it's your favorite Gorilla Silverback. Let's get to it. Alright, as you can see, I got a top, and it's all layered, and I'm going to show y'all the pan shot, and then I'm going to tell y'all a little bit about the organization. So, I went from top to bottom, as the newest Xbox, last gen, gen before, so on and so on, and you can see it's pretty current in all the cubicles. On how I did it. Now I know the PlayStation is over there instead of being on top of here, but you know, I just gotta make it a good feng shui. Alright, let's get to it. Uh here go to Xbox Series S and I got your Seagate hard drive. There go uh my Phillips light. Love this light. It comes on, man. It's got so many settings on it. You can actually light it up. Make it bright as you want. It can turn to a ring light. It's, it's so much. You can do it with this. And it's touch. You touch it and turn it off. Here go my custom white Nintendo Switch. I had this um, customized white before the OLED came out. That's my white Echo. Stop listening. Sorry about that, y'all. Here go my... All, my first white all digital PS5 with the Seagate PlayStation hard drive. There go the controls for my shelf. There go the sound bar, the remote control to my sound bar. And my TV back here is a Vizio. I don't know the model. But it's not a TV, it's an actual monitor. And it has RGB input for your video game tech heads. Everybody know a TV in North America with an RGB input. It's pretty rare and hard to come by. Like I spoke on earlier, that go to Seagate hard drive for the uh, Xbox uh, Series X. S, I'm sorry. Here go the Xbox One with a um, Kinect. I know some people bash the Kinect, but me personally, I, I like the Kinect. Um, do I think it was necessary? No. I wish they would have made it optional. And... Um, that was one of Xbox One's biggest flaw, amongst other things. We'll talk about that later. Here go to 360. With the, the first Xbox uh, Connect, uh, this is the uh, ceramic white uh, slim. Here go my custom original Xbox. This was actually a European white Xbox. Uh, my man gutted it out. Put me a blue LED in there. When this turns on, it's blue. Uh, I love it. It's, it plays uh, burn games, as you can see. Mame is in there. Arcade titles. Down here, because it was nothing came before the original Xbox, I got the uh, HD hard drive for the Xbox down here. This is a retro freak that plays Game Boy Advance. Um... Uh, TurboGrafx 16s, um, Genesis, Nintendo. It's it's an all-in-one machine. It's actually awesome. Uh, Y'all need to check it out. That's a retro freak. On top of that, there's a PC Engine, which is the Japanese version for the Turbo Graphics. The Turbo Graphics 16 slot is right here, and that's the um, Japanese version of the Turbo Graphics. Coming back up. Uh, here go the PlayStation 4 Slim with a PS Vita 2000. You can tell the 2000 by the circle buttons on it. The 1000 is over. This is the second edition. This, came, this white came out in Japan. I had it imported. Here's a special console a lot of people don't know about. This is 
the PSX, where it actually originally um, was called a PSX, but this, the very first PlayStation was known as the PSX. When this came out, they abandoned the name and gave it to this, but the original PlayStation were called a PSX. Anyway, we'll go back on that. But this is the PSX. Essentially, this is a PlayStation 2. Um, the first one with a hard drive. We got a hard drive in the U.S. Um, with a, in a Final Fantasy bundle. But this came with a hard drive, a DVD burner, a TV tuner, um, uh, and a CD burner. It was, it's, it was awesome. The actual U, UI that we got when you turn on your PlayStation 4 and your Vita actually came from this machine right here. This is the first PlayStation. Our UI that we are so used to came on this machine. Here's a PlayStation 3 um, Super Slim, white. Here go the PSP, white. It's a PS2 Slim, white. A PS2 Fat Boy, white. Um, now this right here is a PS1 with the screen. Man, I love this machine when it came out. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, uh, me and my home um, boys, we used to go to like restaurants like Steak and Shake, take this machine. Everybody wanted to come to our table. Um, my mama was in the hospital when this came out. I used to take this to the hospital, play the games. Like this machine here <laughs> with this screen, I got, I got. The original Xbox, uh, the original PlayStation, and the GameCube with the screen. But this screen right here was so much better. It was an LCD screen. It was so much clearer than the other screens. I'll probably make another video about that. But that PS1 is legendary with the screen. Okay, now, an unpopular uh, opinion is the Wii U. I actually love, not like, I actually love the Wii U. It was innovative. It was uh, unique. It had the best third-party Nintendo games that have been done thus far. Essentially, the reason why this is successful, because most of the games that came off of this system, all they did was port it to the Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Switch benefited from the failure of the Wii U. But those same exact games, y'all, same exact games that was on this machine is on this one. And everybody love it on this one, but it's the same thing. So if you actually love your Switch, you should pick up a Wii U because this is where the old game originated from. And the gamepad actually did a little more functionality and interactive with those same games that's on the Switch. Um... Moving along, here go the uh, white 3DS on top of a Wii. Um, the Wii, when it first came out, very innovative with the motion controls to real gamers. It got uh, niche, as I should say. Like it was, people say it was a gimmick. It wasn't a gimmick, it just got to the point where. Okay, it was cool when it came out. I enjoyed it when it came out, but I would like to have a controller and sit down and play like a regular game console, which they gave you a pro controller, and I use my pro controller with my Wii the most, but um, that was the extent of the Wii. It was, it was very good when it was good, but as it, as it got old, you know, it started to, people started to put it away and just keep it up on their shelf instead of playing, but I actually liked the Wii. Good console. Here go my European white GameCube rare, not not real rare, but uh, kind of rare. And this is a white DS Lite um, that sit on top of it. This bad boy is my Nintendo Switch custom. The guy painted it white and gray. I think it looked amazing. This is one of the few colors that Nintendo didn't come out with this console and that's a white Game Boy Advance that sit on top of it. Um my Nintendo Sweet I mean my Nintendo 64. I actually got it later in lifespan because 
I was uh, PS PlayStation all the way. Um, Saturn, I got it before the Nintendo, but I really didn't play a lot of Sega Saturn. But the Nintendo Switch, when I finally did get one, I appreciate it and I understand the love for the 64. Like the four player games, I mean, Smash Brothers originated on it. Um, um, the Mario Kart 64 Legendary. Uh, everybody know the reason why we like shooters. Uh, 007 get Jane Bond. Oh my God, I could pop that in right now and go for hours on that. Uh, everybody has said a lot about the 64, but you know I just had to show it love because it does deserve love. Okay, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is my custom white Nintendo Switch. Um, I, I enjoyed the guy's work so much that I bought more Joy-Cons. As you can see, he put a control pad on the Joy-Cons. Everybody want Nintendo to do control pads on the Joy-Cons. I mean, it's, it's okay with the buttons, but a control pad as an optional piece should have been done. He did a, a white Pro Controller, uh, the, Nintendo, uh, the, the, the actual system itself. It's white. I mean, he did a he did an excellent job, and you could tell this is not an OLED by the kickstand. Um, I see it didn't turn on, but uh, I do a video about it. Actually, I probably do a video comparing that and the OLED, so you can see um, the difference in the aesthetics. To me personally, with these color buttons. It reminds me of the Famicom. He kind of mixed the Famicom style that Nintendo gives with the color buttons with the white. I just think he did an amazing job. That's why I bought like the complete set. It wasn't, it wasn't cheap. <laughs> it wasn't cheap to make this console, by the way. Um, as I said, this is the digital PS5. It's, it's out of place. It's supposed to go up there. But if I was to put it up there, <laughs> I'd never be able to see my TV. So... That's why the Xbox 6 on top of the Xbox because it's short and I have to put the PS5 over here. But, okay, so I showed y'all the 2000. Here go actually the 1000. Like I said, you can tell by the oval style buttons on the 1000. This is actually an Assassin's Creed um, bundle. Came in white with the game. This is a PS um, TV. People say PS Vita TV, but they just really call it PS TV. But anyway, you can play Vita games on it. You can remote play your uh, uh, PS3. And I think they did a, a jailbreak where you can do it with the PS4. But uh, it's got the bigger hard drive. It's just not white in color. It's actually got a bigger hard drive. I want to say the PS Vita is very underrated um it was a powerful machine now the psp got the love that it deserved but the ps vita was so overlooked it's almost was like the wii u like the psp was successful um it was unique it was it had its own fan base and because it was so similar looking to the ps vita that people really didn't trans, transfer um, and, and get a PS Vita because it, it was like, okay, that's just like a newer version for a PSP, but it really not. I mean, the graphics, it gave you an OLED screen. Man, it's immaculate. I turn this thing on today, and the clarity of this machine is, is just second to none. And, and like I said, it's almost like the stigma behind the Wii U. Like, people didn't really understand when they made it is it was so similar to the Wii that people was like oh okay that's just a joystick they made for the Wii but as you can see the Wii is squared off and the Wii U rounded but just like if you just really didn't know and pay attention and it carries the name Wii U you would just think it's the same machine just with a joystick but back to what I was saying like the PS Vita y'all if y'all ain't played it please just if you got a friend that got one they are getting harder to find. They are raising in price. The games are going up in price. Like if you if you happen to try a Vita and you want a Vita, 
now is the time to buy because I'm telling you this is going to be a collector's item and it's going to be more appreciated, more value as time go on. Watch my word. Okay, down here we have the PSP to go, which is, um, I don't want to say first, but I say one of the very first all digital handheld consoles. When this came out, <laughs> it was a bit of a, not uproar, but it was a bit of a, man, why Sony did that, make an all digital console, and it kind of came out a little bit after the PSP. It was the PSP came out, then the PSP go, and then they did the Vita. So it was like an in-between console, but it kind of was out at the same time as the PSP, but it did all digital games, and what GameStop did, they had little cards. I think I still might got my card. It had the card with the actual game on it, just like if you were getting a bundle. It had the card with the game on it, and it was a code on the back, and you just insert the code, boom, and, and download it, and the game was on there. I actually got the God of War game that came on the PSP, and that was, at the time, that was the only way that you can get that game. And it forced me, because <laughs> I'm a God of War fan, it forced me to play the PS, I mean the PSP, the Go, and I, I, I liked it. I actually liked it like I was coming home from work, um, ready to get up on God of War, man. It was it was nice. It feel comfortable in your hand. The slide up screen, you know, was was uh, something different at the time. Um, but it didn't catch on because the all the all digital thing wasn't. It wasn't in consoles. It was like really really new. I don't want to say it was the first console uh, handheld to do it, but I know it, it was one of the first. Um, but the PSP to go is is now is it like a jailbroke machine? A lot of people jailbreak it and put all kinds of games and emulators on it, and that's basically um, what all it is. Because the store is shut down, and um, it's sad that uh, older tech that people might still want to play and, and spend their money on get shut down when new tech come out, and it's like you know it's. It's no love for the people who spend their money, enjoy the enjoy the uh, console that they bought, and then uh, so many years you can't do nothing with it unless you know it's a jailbreak or somebody creates our own server to play online, so forth and so on. But yeah, that's the PSP to go. Right next to it is a little machine that people love to hate. They love to talk about the Ouya. The Ouya, uh, and this is, of course, this is the white one. This is a, the rare, a rare version of the Ouya. A lot of people probably ain't even seen the white Ouya as well as they haven't seen a white PSTV. But the um, Ouya uh, actually was made um, for indie gamers and for you to develop your game. But it, what it suffered from, it gave you a Bluetooth connected joystick which disconnected the Bluetooth capability wasn't reliable um, the games that it promised like third party games like heavy hitters didn't make it to the Ouya and I'm going to do a whole segment about like um, not obscure consoles but consoles outside of main screen that people really doesn't give um the time of day to, and highlight what they did do right, what could have been if you gave it more time, because a Bluetooth connectivity problem could have been solved by just an update. But so many people was mad, and so many people bashed the Ouya that it never really got a chance to not even reach the potential, like reach half of the potential that it did. And if you would notice, you see the size of the Ouya. Um, and the PSTV, and see, this was done way back in the day, but then you got an all digital console like the S, and look how big that is, like, it did a lot of things right, it gave you a whole machine, and basically the size of a handheld, but like I said, people, was, it's so quick, if you're not PlayStation, if you're not Nintendo, and if you're not Xbox, you, you come in, with high expectation, 
And if you don't have the money or the games to back, they're going to forget about you. Just like that. Moving along. Y'all all know from my other videos, my favorite, favorite, favorite console of all time. Sega Dreamcast. Now, on top of it, is a Sega. Well, it's not even a Sega. It's an at game on uh, handheld console that got a lot of Sega titles already pre-installed on it. It's basically like a <sighs> knockoff emulator. Everybody know what at games do because they made all the little mini consoles before Sega actually took over the project and made their own Sega mini consoles. But uh, I just put that on top of the um, Dreamcast because it's Sega related. Um, the Dreamcast, man, ahead of its time, um, did everything right. The promotion, the games. Um, only thing that they didn't do that people look back now and say why, but it was kind of a toss-up because it was new technology. They didn't put a DVD drive inside the Dreamcast, and that's that, that's what they say was detrimental to the Dreamcast, which... I don't care about a DVD because a game console is a game console. We have adapted to the all-in-one method with the Xbox and the PlayStation going back and forth and the PlayStation having the rights over Blu-ray, which some people don't even know, which not PlayStation, Sony itself, which is the mother company. And Xbox tried to rob them with the HD uh, format, which didn't take off, but... The all-in-one machines have taken over um, instead of just being what we actually buy the machine for us to play games. Like, the one of the last founding game consoles, in my opinion, is the Switch. And what I mean by that is when you got the physical copy and you actually put it inside your console and it turns on and you can play it, that's what I mean by last... Um, true gaming console it don't take two three hours to download a game depending on your internet connectivity like these new consoles have gotten mainstream to a sell and I, I that's a whole nother opinion and video I'm gonna do on that but going back to my original thing is uh, the Dreamcast it's it was ahead of its time with the internet that it, it actually is the grandfather of Xbox Live, of the PlayStation um, Plus. It's, it, it's actually the reason why we online game came from the Dreamcast. Um, people don't even give it the credit that it deserves. Um, but the people who do like the Dreamcast, they love it. They love it just like I do. Um, number one game console of all time. Um, Wrapped in front of the Nintendo NES, which is dear and loved um, by a lot of people. But Sega Dreamcast, I can go on and on about it, but I'm not. <sighs> Up underneath, because I started right there with Sega, you know, I could have went up top. But it's no white Genesis, and I didn't want to get it custom. So I just put those down here. But the Sega Saturn, the Sega Saturn really didn't take off in the U.S. because Sega was doing a lot of questionable things as the 32X, the Sega CD. They was like rushing out peripherals and then when they came out with this, excuse me, it was even talks of a Sega Neptune, which is a whole 32 uh, Sega console made in the one. So it was a lot going on. Now, even me as a Sega boy, because I told y'all in my last video, I kind of left Sega alone. I wasn't like pro Sega. Like I was when the PlayStation came out. I was all about the PlayStation. Like when these three consoles was out, it was PlayStation, then 64, and then uh, Sega Saturn. Now, but what I did get into is this cartridge slide in the back. You can do an action replay. This is actually a Japan version on um, ceramic white. Um, Saturn, so you don't need to do it on this one, but the American version is black, and you can tell the second editions and the first edition by the buttons. This is a second edition, it's circle, the first edition is oval. But the American Sega Saturn, you had to have an action replay card. You 
put it in a bag right there. It gave you expansion on memory. And what it, what it what allows it, you to do was unlock the console to where you can play imported games. And um, if you was a fighting fan, like X-Men versus Street Fighter, um, Marvel Capcom, um, Marvel Super Heroes, those games was all in the arcades. Those games was back to back. Like, and when we got it in the states for the PlayStation, <laughs> it wasn't powerful enough to allow you to switch out characters. Like, you actually had to play one character the whole match until you died, and then the other character came in. Versus the Sega Saturn was strong enough to where it did just like the arcade and what the game intended to. You could swap out um, characters um, just as frequent. And fluent as you can do in the arcade. So a lot of my Sega Saturn gameplay came from actual uh, Japanese or imported games. Um, and, and a majority of them were spy, uh, fighting games. Uh, like I have State of X-Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel Super Hero, so forth and so on. Because um, they was they was played best out of these three, which this one didn't even get it um, on the Saturn. You had games as like Knights on the Saturn. They really, truly didn't give our Sega Saturn version of Sonic, which in my opinion really hurt it. They had like off-brand Sonic, like Sonic R and uh, Sonic Jam, I think Sonic 3D Blast, but those were like off-brand. It wasn't a Sonic Adventure or anything that came on there, which a lot of people say hurt the Saturn. But uh, as you can see, when you go across my shelf, those are the competing consoles of those generations. Um, and I did this on purpose. And like I said, if you go down my shelf, it's the same. It goes from uh, newest to oldest. And like I said, the PlayStation is all centered. But if I put it above that, uh, I wouldn't be able to see my TV. Um, one... One day I'm going to give y'all a room tour, but this room is actually all white, so I have a lot of white consoles. These are, these, it's consoles in these boxes that sit on side of my game shelf, and um, I just thought it looked cool and awesome on the, the boxes, but it's like I said, the consoles is in there. But yeah, guys, um, this is the video. I know everybody was asking what was all in my shelf, and they be trying to look at it through the background, and I get asked about it, so I want to do this video. Real quick, I want to give a shout-out to a couple of people, and I don't mean, I don't mean to offend um, everybody that has helped me, but it was, it was, it's a couple of people that I feel like um, I deserve to acknowledge, and that's one, my number one fan, my battle buddy, Ray, Ray Fonda Scott A., <laughs> <laughs> you keep me going, girl. Just know I love you. Uh, two, my nephew, man, he, him and his buddy Quay, they came over. They got me right. I wouldn't be here, y'all, if it wasn't for him. A lot of stuff that's that's done behind the scenes, he do. He tight me up. He keep me tight up, man, and I, I love that boy. I raised that boy. And three, man, my tech guy, Corey. I had some issues with my computer. Man, he came and day one he grabbed my computer, got me right, and now I'm back up and running, man. And he didn't charge me a dime. So to everybody else, hey, I didn't, I didn't leave, mean to leave you out, but it's just that this video wouldn't be possible without those few people. I love y'all. Um, and to the next time, y'all.